simply said, be content, be fool, wake up and already be ready. Waking up and knowing everything you need, here it is. Should I not do the things that are available today? Should I not go on the beach if I like to go on the beach? Buy a nice car if I like to buy a nice car? Jump from the parachute if I like to jump? I didn't say that. What I'm saying is, if your satisfaction about life, your fullness of life is dependent on these things, then it's a problem because they will not be available to you at all times. When I set myself a goal that I really want to have, I have no doubt about it. I only need to have patience. I need to be clear and calm to really figure out the proper plans, how to do. And then meanwhile, there is no doubt in that sense because I feel if I really want something, the energy must be there. My mind must be there. If my mind is there, my energy is there. And there we have sometimes these nice Asian sayings. Whatever is important to you, where your heart is, there is the mind. Where the mind is, so where the intention is, there is the energy. Where the energy is, there's the creation. So if your heart is hanging on something, but your actions are doing something else, that just means your energy and what your heart really wants, they are not merging at all. So the universe doesn't know <laughs> what do you want, what should the universe give you now. So for me, it's all about alignment. What I feel inside aligns with what I talk, it aligns with what I think, it aligns with what my actions do, it aligns optimally with the proper circumstances. And when everything is aligned, then the energy can just flow, then it just flows and it just happens. Everybody, no matter where they are, is able to transform something about himself or herself. It's just about the methods and the understanding that, first of all, it's possible. Second of all, there are methods how to do it. And third of all, you don't need to wait for anybody to come into your life in order to start it. So the message is, there is a big part that you have in your own hands. And there's a big other part you don't have in your hands. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying, maybe it would be good to focus your energy into the things that are 100% based on your own energies and your own actions. Yeah. In Buddhist teaching, number one is about you yourself become suffer free, first of all, for yourself. And second one is develop the compassion to help other people, other beings, not just humans, to get along the same path for personal liberation. So why is that compassion so important? Because ultimately we are connected. Simple expressed. It's like this in this room right now. We are like five people. And now just imagine this room would be locked and we have a limited amount of food, a limited amount of drinks. So if I would now just say, okay, good, I will just take everything to me. So as long as I survive, it's all good. <laughs> you all can suffer. Automatically has caused conflict. So it's just a question of time until we're going to break out in a fight. Why? Because in Buddhist teachings, we say it is impossible to become happy, satisfied, free on your own. Why? Because you are connected. So there is only one way to really sustainably remain somehow in peace and that one is to look for a way that we all are connected and share what we have. Either we all succeed or we all fail. That's it. But it's not possible that an individual within a society succeeds alone and the other suffer. It's then the conflict is embedded already in the core of this approach. What do you think is the key to living authentically? First of all, the possibility that you are able to observe yourself. If you can't see yourself, if you cannot observe your own actions, observe what is it that's going on on the mind, then it's really difficult to make a differentiation between are you authentic now or are you not? Yeah? Are you lying to yourself or are you not? So number one step is you need to be able to observe yourself. Second one is you need to be able to criticize yourself. 
So if at all times you always say I'm the best, there's nothing for, there's nothing I can improve myself in. I'm almost godlike, so then uh, there is no development coming. But now exactly those two things that I mentioned: observing yourself and then being able to criticize. Number one, you need awareness in order to do the observation. And number two, you need strength to take the criticize that you give to yourself. Awareness and strength. And this is the reason why it is so good to have physical exercises integrated into your lifestyle that all the time are having these two areas embedded into the training already. This is also the approach that I'm trying to promote, that everything can be changed by the way how our mind is looking at ourselves and into the world. It's all about the mind. It's all about the mind. But in order to change the mind, we need something. Awareness and strength, for example. How do you get to strength? How do you make the mind stronger? How do you make that yourself become more aware? We cannot just sit and wish, okay, I want to be more aware. I want to be more strong. No, we need an additional instrument in order to be able to cultivate it. And this instrument is the body. For me, it's the body. So by using the body and putting your body into a challenging position, into a challenging exercise. That is why now, because your body is shaking, because your body is under stress, this is now why we have the chance to improve the mind. Because now it's the mind power that can determine what your body should do and should not do. This is that relationship. At the end of the day, it's about the mind power that we want to have. But we need the body to cultivate everything that we would like to have there. I also think that this is that specialty maybe about the various teachings that are existing because many of them are maybe study-based, book-based, I don't know what based. And at least this way of what we try to share, it's physical and mind-based. But the physical part is just the entrance. It's nice, it is exciting, it's beautiful, it's great to be able to immerse yourself from time to time into the possibilities of what this world has given to us. But it's not the most important. So the approach for me would be, first of all, find yourself. Be content, first of all, simply said, be content, be full, wake up and already be ready Waking up and knowing everything you need, here it is. Hmm. That's it. Now, whatever comes during the day doesn't really matter because you know that this, it's there, it's full, it's complete. You have been complete already. And with this completeness of yourself, then now you can engage in the things. You can enjoy your time. That is not a problem because you know already the basics or the foundation of your life it's here, it's stable, it's stable, it's solid, you cannot shake it, it's there. But then now, going here, going there, doing this, doing that, it's all not a problem. So that is also the misinterpretation that people say, yeah, so should I not do the things that are available today? Should I not go on the beach if I like to go on the beach? Buy a nice car if I like to buy a nice car? Uh, jump from the parachute if I like to jump? I didn't say that. What I'm saying is, if your satisfaction about life, your fullness of life is dependent on these things, then it's a problem because they will not be available to you at all times. The availability of these things is not because of what you want, it's because of how the circumstances are. And so the idea is, find yourself, build yourself up, invest in yourself, make yourself stable, figure out your place in the world, and afterwards, when this is established, now enjoy the world. This is what I'm saying. It's the lack of energy itself. The lack of energy resulting mainly out of the fact that too many people are sitting too much. There is too much work, meanwhile, being done in this world, where their daily week, their daily months, is consisting of sitting. 
there is no physicality inside there anymore where you could actually channel your energies and express them in some way getting the energy to express itself from time to time so what does the energy do instead of flowing and nourishing the body it gets stuck sometimes because of the sitting it just also gets stuck and then goes maybe into your head or goes to wherever it goes and creates all type of problems mental problems emotional problems physical problems but many of these things simply because of the lack of motion the lack of using the body if the one would have the idea that we are supposed to come to this world and just sit in our room and do all our thinking work and create a life by thinking well then maybe life would look like this but we have been giving hands and arms and feet and all of these things i think because it's different to touch the earth it's different to touch the tree it's different to touch the water it's different to walk it's different to jump it's different to run it's different to swim than just like looking at all these things on the screen how a tree looks <laughs> how the water looks whatever so that means this digitally based consumption instead of the real deal the real simple stuff going out of the house and step on the grass this is what is creating a big big shift for the mental states i think if something is really important in your life then your lifetime should go a lot into that direction if your mind is focused your actions that you do are not lazy actions they also fit together i really think there is no secret behind if you put in the work and the circumstances are also right and you put in the energy and the determination and your heart hangs behind it for me there is no reason to not say it's going to happen as simple as this so when something was important to me i kept going and if the day was long i had a long time to practice